We have known for a long time that we can very easily turn matter into energy. It would be logical for this process to be reversed, to create matter from energy. But scientists have been working on this theory for a long time, and finally, after many decades, for the first time in human history, scientists have achieved results and created matter from energy, from photons. Part of the great mystery of the universe has finally been revealed. Man has managed to solve and prove that the universe is slowly but surely revealing its secrets. We still have a long way to go, but of course, this huge progress will lead to even greater discoveries. In this video we will explain the process of converting energy into matter. Plus, let us not forget the most important thing that this process is the foundation of the creation and existence of the universe. In 1905 Albert Einstein wrote four groundbreaking papers on quantum theory and relativity. One was on Brownian motion, one earned him the Nobel Prize in 1921, and one outlined the foundations of special relativity. It became known as Einstein's Annus Mirabilis or Wondrous Year. But it's Einstein's last 1905 paper that is the most unexpected. Scientists studying particle collisions at the relativistic heavy ion collider have produced definitive evidence for two physics phenomena predicted more than 80 years ago. The results were derived from a detailed analysis of more than 6,000 pairs of electrons and positrons produced in glancing particle collisions at the relativistic heavy ion collider. The primary finding is that pairs of electrons and positrons, particles of matter and antimatter, can be created directly by colliding very energetic photons, which are quantum packets of light. This conversion of energetic light into matter is a direct consequence of Einstein's famous E equals mc2 equation, which states that energy and matter, or mass are interchangeable. Nuclear reactions in the sun and at nuclear power plants regularly convert matter into energy. Now scientists have converted light energy directly into matter in a single step. The second result shows that the path of light traveling through a magnetic field in a vacuum bends differently depending on how that light is polarized. Such polarization-dependent deflection, known as biofringence occurs when light travels through certain materials. This effect is similar to the way wavelength-dependent deflection splits white light into rainbows. But this is the first demonstration of polarization-dependent light bending in a vacuum. Both results depend on the ability of RHIC star detector, the solenoid tracker at RHIC, to measure the angular distribution of particles produced in glancing collisions of gold ions moving at nearly the speed of light. Such capabilities didn't exist when physicists Gregory Bright and John A. Wheeler first described the hypothetical possibility of colliding light particles to create pairs of electrons and their antimatter counterparts, known as positrons, in 1934. In their paper, Bright and Wheeler already realized this is almost impossible to do. Lasers didn't even exist yet, but Bright and Wheeler proposed an alternative, accelerating heavy ions. And their alternative is exactly what we are doing at the relativistic heavy ion collider. An ion is essentially a naked atom, stripped of its electrons. A gold ion, with 79 protons, carries a powerful positive charge. Accelerating such a charged heavy ion to very high speeds generates a powerful magnetic field that spirals around the speeding particle as it travels, like current flowing through a wire. If the speed is high enough, the strength of the circular magnetic field can be equal to the strength of the perpendicular electric field. And that arrangement of perpendicular electric and magnetic fields of equal strength is exactly what a photon is, a quantized particle of light. So, when the ions are moving close to the speed of light, there are a bunch of photons surrounding the gold nucleus, traveling with it like a cloud. At RHIC, scientists accelerate gold ions to 99.995% of the speed of light in two accelerator rings. We have two clouds of photons moving in opposite directions with enough energy and intensity that when the two ions graze past each other without colliding, those photon fields can interact. But such particle pairs can be created by a range of processes at RHIC, including through virtual photons, a state of photon that exists briefly and carries an effective mass. To be sure the matter-antimatter pairs were coming from real photons, scientists have to demonstrate that the contribution of virtual photons does not change the outcome of the experiment. To do that, the star scientists analyzed the angular distribution patterns of each electron relative to its partner positron. These patterns differ for pairs produced by real photon interactions versus virtual photons. Other scientists have tried to create electron-positron pairs from collisions of light using powerful lasers, focus beams of intense light. But the individual photons within those intense beams don't have enough energy yet. 
One experiment at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory in 1997 succeeded by using a non-linear process. Scientists there first had to boost the energy of the photons in one laser beam by colliding it with a powerful electron beam. Collisions of the boosted photons with multiple photons simultaneously in an enormous electromagnetic field created by another laser produced matter and antimatter. Stars' ability to measure the tiny deflections of electrons and positrons produced almost back-to-back -back in these events also gave the physicists a way to study how light particles interact with the powerful magnetic fields generated by the accelerated ions. The cloud of photons surrounding the gold ions in one of RHIC's beams is shooting into the strong circular magnetic field, produced by the accelerated ions in the other gold beam, a long-time star collaborator from Shandong University, who spent his entire career studying electron-positron pairs produced from various processes at RHIC. Looking at the distribution of particles that come out tells us how polarized light interacts with the magnetic field. This illustration shows how light with different polarization directions, indicated by black arrows passes through a material along two different paths, yellow beams. This is called the biofringence effect. Results from RHIC provide evidence that biofringence also happens in a magnetic field in a vacuum. Werner Heisenberg and Hans Heinrich Euler in 1936, and John Toll in the 1950s, predicted that a vacuum of empty space could be polarized by a powerful magnetic field and that such a polarized vacuum should deflect the paths of photons depending on photon polarization. Toll, in his thesis, also detailed how light absorption by a magnetic field depends on polarization and its connection to the refractive index of light in a vacuum. This polarization-dependent deflection, or biofringence, has been observed in many types of crystals. There was also a recent report of the light coming from a neutron star bending this way, presumably because of its interactions with the star's magnetic field. But no Earth-based experiment has detected biofringence in a vacuum. This is similar to the way polarized sunglasses block certain rays from passing through if they don't match the polarization of the lenses, Yang explained. In the case of the sunglasses, in addition to seeing less light get through, you could, in principle, measure an increase in the temperature of the lens material as it absorbs the energy of the blocked light. At RHIC, the absorbed light energy is what creates the electron-positron pairs. It is up to us humans to continue exploring the secrets of existence, the secrets of creation. Maybe one day these discoveries will unite us, will make us think of a better tomorrow, a better life. As it is said in the Star Trek, to boldly go where no one has gone before.